Okay, how are we doing out there? First things first, my name is Kenneth Bird. I'm the creator of Supreme Ambient Light Projection Screen Paint using Ambient Light Projection Technology Gain. Got several things to do today. Today is going to be a busy day. Good thing I did get those demonstrations out of the way yesterday because I never know what my Lord is going to have for me to do the next day. So, I'm going to be using for right now until I figure out how I'm going to be attaching maybe a 250 inch screen to the back of my deck. I am going to be using my side screen, which I have been using uh, to for a paint uh, cloth. So this right here is 150 inch 169 surface. Uh, I've been using this as a giant paint cloth for painting my screens. I'm going to utilize it today for outside. So I'm going to be recoding this with black technology. Um, now, I've got to get a few things done around the house. i got to fire up my 1,000 lumen projector because that whole challenge thing I'm doing right now for one month. I swapped out my projector. I'm no longer using the 3400 lumen Sony um, Usonic projector. For one month, I can only use my 1,000 lumen projector. So let me get a few things i got to get done out of the way around here and get tidied up. I told you when I came on here, the first time I was going to steal my lights on. And begin. So let me uh, fire up. Let me see what I need to fire up this projector right here. I need to change my shirt. Nice shirt. We have a gray one. I like my gray shirt. And I feel like my hat. I gotta get ready to start shaving again. So I'm gonna fire that projector up. Right now I'm downstairs washing out my rollers and getting them ready to do the demonstration uh, for black screen, taking this outside because. I got that whole backyard to play around in. Might as well get up there and utilize and have some fun with it. And I got a research section of where I'm gonna put the squirrels at. So let me see. Now, I keep getting emails from time to time from overseas. Uh, please understand, go to the website. There is a huge, um, there's a huge, uh, 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 um, um, hold on for a minute. Just level up this right. Sorry, maybe my headrest is down a little bit. Let me see if I move my headrest on my chair. All the way up. That's all the way up. Let me my headrest here. There we go. My headrest is moving these things. Let me get this proper of case right. No, it's too much on that side. Let's get a pop up on that side. That's better. Headrest down. Oh, got some chair. There's the headrest. There we go. That'll work. That's perfect. Let me do again. Talk about that a little bit. Okay. Phone back here. This is my screen. I got another one. Actually, put another projector if I choose.
Let me see. That's for that right there. Where is that? Um... Oh, it's in the other room. That's where it's at. It's in the other room. I can bring my 900 women down the stairs. Let me do that. I've run over at the same time. Eight and nine at the same time. I'll swap them up for two if I get that big screen. I might have used both at the same time. So I'll run the PC too. So I can find using both my projectors at the same time. Paint this too. I'm gonna to turn it into a screen. I haven't did cardboard in a long time. I think this will turn it into a screen too. Also, we'll be turning this box into a projection screen and use it outside. Also, that will be also today.
see, I got that from two games. Using the Bulls Bulls House Loom is here, and that is the 900 Loom. So I'm going to double my challenge. I'm going to actually make it harder for me by running two different projectors, one at 900, one at 1,000. Now, those are going to stay on all day because I can't use the other one anymore. These are the projectors I have to use. One's running a PC, the other one's running, uh, the, other one's running the um, uh, Chromecast. I have done this demonstration already before. There we go. Since I'm using a 138 inch 235.1 at this point, I to just have one projector on here. Mind if I put both of them. Uh, keep in mind the projectors, as I said before, are very old, so they only do 4.3. They can't do 16. Let me grab some internet from upstairs. Yeah. On the internet. It's running right now. Now, the reason why I do when I do this fabric projection screen and I get people who do fabric screens all the time. First I do is I'll coat the screen without priming it first. And I explain to them, please don't do that. Because what happens is the screen is fabric. The particular screen that I select. When you ask me what screen or what material can I paint this on for outside, I will send you a link to a website, I mean to a link on um, Amazon. And I've had people ignore the link, go out and buy something else, and mess up the screen. So I'm showing you where to get it at and how to paint it. You follow those instructions. You have a nice, beautiful display outside, which we're going to be doing today. We're going to display a 150-inch screen outside. I say prime the surface first. Because the screen, it's going to absorb. It's a fabric. It's a very thick fabric. The bigger the screen, the more heavier the fabric is going to be. This is a 150-inch screen I'm going to do. The other screen I'm going to have to do, uh, hopefully next week, is 250 inches. I still don't even know how I'm going to go about painting this thing because I don't even have any room in this house or even try to attempt to do it outside because it's too big of a surface. So I may have to result to using invisible coating on mesh because... Mesh is easier for me to coat because with the um, 
invisible technology, it's a one coat application where if I had to prime a, and paint a 250 inch screen, I'm gonna have to basically find an area to paint a screen that's gonna be over 11 feet high and over 176 inches wide. There is nothing in this house big enough to contain something that size. So can't do it outside. If you paint a screen outside, you run the risk of leaves or squirrels or anything else, dust, anything blowing onto your screen. And if I were to paint it upward, that would be a headache because I would have to sp uh, spray that entire thing. I can't use a roller wire screen. It's suspended, um, especially when using suspension screens. It's kind of hard to do. So I may have to build two of these screens. I'm going to have to build one at 150 inches, which I'm going to be using this one right here, which I can suspend and use. And I'm going to use a mesh. We're going to use, we're going to actually get a huge piece of, of mesh that I can use to basically coat. So that's going to be interesting because I can do rear and front because this technology is like, uh, it's invisible technology. So I can actually use this screen for 3D mapping for rear and front, which we're going to do a lot of cool stuff in the backyard. I'm going to be setting up for for doing all kinds of applications with 3D applications. I'm actually going to actually change the infrastructure of my backyard, everything back there. I'm actually scan the entire backyard and change the entire backyard. I might make it turn into an ocean, whatever I want. So it's going to be kind of cool to see what I can do with this stuff, especially when it snows. Because when it snows, I mean, even though it's going to be a complete whiteout, all that white out there, but still, it's going to be fun to work with. So we'll see what we can do with this stuff. Let me see now. I need to find out why this one disconnected, which it shouldn't have. Put that one back on. That one's supposed to be running right now. This one I just had to hook internet to right now, it's a few minutes ago. So let's get this one up and going. And then we can start on, because I'm right now washing up my rollers downstairs. So I can actually do this, paint this screen again. So I had a customer go out and I gave him the link exactly where to buy the screen at. He wanted to buy a screen from somebody else. Paid a pretty penny for it too. He would have gotten, uh, for I'm not going to tell you what he paid for, but it was, it, was, it was a good amount of money what he paid for from getting the screen. I told him, you don't want to paint that. You definitely want to paint that. A PVC material, if it's portable, don't paint that. And I'll tell you why. Because when you paint a PVC screen, like these screens are made out of PVC, they're going to stay there. They're going to dry. We do motorized projection screens. Believe it or not, the motorized projection screen's PVC surface is different from the surface of a PVC when it comes to a fixed frame screen. It's two different surfaces of PVC. The motorized version is much more stiffer, more dense surface. It's easier to dry. It's less to stick. So that's why I can do motorized, you can roll up and roll down and roll up and roll down. Now, this is made out of the same flimsy kind of loose, stretchy material as you would have in the, in the um, fixed frames, then you would have a problem because that is known to stick. No matter what you paint it on, it's designed to stick because this is kind of a, um, a kind of a PVC material that's very stretchy. And what happens is if you fold this screen up, what's gonna happen is that heat, when it, anything you press on that screen, that, that soft um, material is going to press like taking two pieces of bread and mashing them together. That's what it's gonna happen. And when you go to pull it apart, it's going to stick and it's going to peel. Now, when you buy those screens, if you notice, they'll have a piece of material in between. Even if the screen's white, it always has a piece of material in between. That's because the screen is constantly, constantly, constantly uh, um, um, to keep the screen from sticking together. That's why that paper's in between there. You don't find that motorized projection screens. Motorized projection screens, when you're unrolling, there's no thin piece of paper in there. That's why you find them on these particular screens, because the material is kind of a stretchy, kind of very thin material, and it's easy to projection screens aren't designed that way. It's a stiff PVC material. So that's why every time you want to buy one of these screens and you unroll it and, there's, and you unroll your screen, there's always paper in between to keep the screen from actually sticking. So they make this same material for these portable screens, fabric screens like that. Those are the ones you want to stay far away from. You want to go with a fabric screen. Now, keep in mind, if you find a screen that has front and rear, you want to go with the invisible technology. Do not use the uh, front paint that we use for uh, front and rear. All right, it's not going to work out too well. Trust me. I, I found that out the hard way when I was doing a motorized projection screen. And when I want to coat the um, screen, 
When the light passed through it, it faded the screen completely because there's light passing through the screen and that technology wasn't designed to be filtered like that. Let me see, let's go and blow this up. And let's go over to YouTube. I need some bright colors, that's all I need. Let me see. Ooh, I didn't mean nightmares for a freaking week. Let's see. Something nice and bright in there. So this one, the settings for these projectors, this one, like I said, these are old projectors. Uh, no, I'll skip that crap. I don't want it. Thank you. Okie dokie. So they will run for today. switched over the image has to be bright bright white so i found some flowers flowers are the one thing on the screen that can run all day and i don't have to worry about saying well it's coming up too dark i'm only supposed to display uh brighter images on the screen so those of you that are not familiar this is too dark not gonna work that's not gonna work too dark this one's coming up too dark this is not gonna work i need something brighter than this let me see what we got going on here So those of you are wondering, like, what the heck is he doing? Well, I figured if my black technology is supposed to be um, so dark, I thought I put out a one month challenge. In the one month challenge, you can only use projectors of a thousand lumens to under, of a thousand lumens and under. They have to be six hundred by eight hundred res SVGA projectors. Oh, that's what I just bought. I just bought that right there. I just bought that. Um, and in that, in this demonstration, I have to, in the one month demonstration, I have to swap out my projector, which means I'm showing that I solely don't have to depend on my high end projector. I can actually use low bottom projectors. Now my end, because my screen is black, I have to display all white images for the other individual. He's going to have to do fully the environment, just like I'm doing right now. And he's going to have to display his gray screen paint using contrast demonstrations only. So that's why you see me hunting in here for for um for more more brighter demonstrations. Let me see if I can something like white flowers or something like that. Now see, I need something like that that's going on over there. That's what I need. That's what I need. No. It's only fair to if you're gonna if you're gonna talk, you gotta back it up. So that's why this is being done. And as I'm showing you my computer screen coming off a black screen, you gotta consider that right now. Like right now, you're watching my computer, my 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 projector at 900 lumens puts a white background at 900 lumens, and you could read my text crystal clear off a black screen. But like I said. But I'm just, you know what I mean? If I'm, I'm not going to show you, I don't have to depend on heavy hardware. So let me see. This is the one I'm using for that one or that one I'm using? I'm going to nice, bright, some bright, beautiful flowers. Well, that's four hours of natural white flowers. Let's see where this gets me at. Let me see if we can skip up here. I'm going to see what I'm getting. I don't want anything in there dark at all. I should also do some sandy white beaches too. That'd be really nice to do too, also. Some white beaches in there. Now this would be, let me see. Let me make sure I'm doing things right by the book. There we go. So all I can display on my end. It's nothing but 
bright flowers. Anything has to be everything in white, no contrast, because my screen is designed for contrast. So it's going to produce um, contrast levels regardless. So I have to stay away from anything that the screen uh, can do. So I'm showing all white levels. You're going to see snow levels. You're going to see skin tones, all that. And it's going to be done on these low-end projectors that I'm using. One cost me $75. The other one cost me uh, $49. So we're using low-end projectors. So this just basically just proves to my customers that not only one, number one, my black screens don't have to do contrast demonstrations. I do a lot of white levels. I'm sure that screens can perform very high white levels. And then on the have to use any of my high big boy projectors which I have here I can just result to using my uh, little low-end projectors right there portable low-end projectors this one's so old that I had to run my computer through it that's how old this one is it doesn't use the adapter the adapters don't work on that one now the adapters will work on the Sony that's basically about it and the screens have to sit back around 10 to 11 feet I'm at about 10 feet back in my environment so anytime I come in here for one month I can only display these projectors only and I can only display white levels only that's all I can display I can't display contrast for the other person they have to use a low-end projector no ultra shirt those none of that nonsense it must show that the projector is sitting about 10 feet to 11 feet back um, they must do all contrast demonstrations only star field demonstrations Tron anything with really heavy heavy dark contrast demonstrations on a gray screen and a fully lit environment. And I mean, I wanna see all the corners have to be well lit, as you're seeing in mine. Well lit environment. I don't want to see shadowy areas. I don't want to see little lamp lights of lamp lamps here and there peppered through the environment and the shadowy areas. I want there to be nice and bright. If you look at the back area of my screen, you can see everything crystal clear. This is how it's supposed to be presented. So that's the challenge, and it goes on for one month. So you will see me come in here when I start my day, as I usually do, and I record it and turn my lights on. Now, like I said, in black technology, if I had to display white levels, then anyone using gray technology who is comparing their technology to ours as being better, they should have to display content. And before someone says that, well, Ken, you got a black screen, we have a gray screen, too, called the Black Silver. It's gray. And we did the same thing on that screen. I tested that screen against other high-performance gray screens. I did contrast levels on that screen. As a matter of fact, that screen pulled a star field outside. I know I say it too much, but it pulled the star field outside at 1,000 lumens at about 13 feet back on a gray screen. Those demonstrations have never done on any other gray screen. So if you're going to talk about your technology being this, that, and the other, you have to back it up. All right, let's move on from there. I have to get the rollers washed out. We're gonna be painting that screen right there. Now, if you notice, if you look at the screen, see how it's gray here, right? And see how it's white here? The reason why, because this surface was primed first before I actually applied that first coating on it. Doesn't require two different coatings, because some people get it mixed up. Okay, I saw in your video, your screen was white on one side and gray on other. No, this was a previously coated screen. It was already painted. That's the reason why this side is gray or light gray because that's the primer I use to soak up the, um, um, the, um, the paint into the screen. And this is the screen I used to have on there. All right, so we're gonna repaint over that. I don't have to prime this because it's already been painted. You're just priming it for the simple fact of it's for the simple fact that it's a, it's a, um, a fabric material and a fabric material is going to absorb paint so all the primers for the heavy primer it can be blue paint orange paint green paint purple paint doesn't make a difference as long as you put something on that surface to absorb as much paint as possible to lay a foundation that's all it's for some people tell me they think they got to go and buy a special primer no buy some cheap paint that's all you need. You just want something to absorb the surface, much like a sponge. If you take a dry sponge, you stick it on the table, it's going to absorb all that water into the sponge. You fill it with as much water as you possibly can, and then you actually add another layer of water over top of it. It can't take any more. That's what you're doing. That's all. I learned that the hard way. Everything I'm showing you is because I learned it the hard way. I painted the screen, and it was blotches. I don't know what. I said, what the freak just happened? 
And I realized that the screen was exorbitant paint in different, in different levels all over the screen. So next time around, what I did was I actually, when I put the second coat over top of it again, it didn't do that because it absorbed all that paint. And that's when I realized, okay, I got to prime the surface first to get it to absorb the paint. Same lesson I learned about the middle bar, the middle of the screen, painting a 180 inch screen and getting four bar lines in the middle of my screen. I learned that I had to pad the bar before I paint it. So this is from experience of things that have happened with mistakes. That's why I said mistakes are important because it allows you to be able to refine your craft or to teach you something new. So if you come in here real quick with me and I'll show you the blue screen, I'm gonna show you real quick. And if you look at the surface on the blue screen, you see no lines or nothing in the screen, how perfect that looks. That's the screen that I painted yesterday that I used as a paint pan. The one where I ran a sponge all around the edges and you know, paint was splattered all over the screen. That's the screen right there. And that one has a bar right in the center of it. No imprints, nothing in the screen. That's how I know because I've made mistakes when I, when I do stuff. So I try to, uh, I try to, uh, when I made mistakes, this guy, this guy's never ordered from us before. It's interesting how this fellow is saying he canceled his orders. They're already starting from the door. All my orders are done. I don't have any more orders. They're done. Oh, I have no idea. See, that's the problem. When people come in and do stuff like that, when they try to make false claims, first things first, if you did make an order, I would have all your information, shipping address, everything in my account. I would have that from the door. All our PayPal accounts right now are empty. We only have one order that has to be shipped out, and that's a customer. We made a mistake. We accidentally skipped by, by accident. We had 20 orders, and we skipped them by accident. He contacted us on it. We found the order. We went in, and we're actually going to be shipping his order. I ordered a gallon of the black. That's the fellow I advised to go out and get the, um, he was going to spend $1,500 for a projector, and I advised him to get the projector I have upstairs, which is the uh, Christy, uh, he got the Christy 550, the big boy, he bought one of them. So that's the only person that we have, that's it. So that particular individual, I'm sorry. It's going to happen, they're going to sink the little tap to topic, little um, tactics because they can't use what they were using before, and I'm going to explain this to you. Um, at, there were a lot of uh, conspiracies because they wouldn't accept the technology's capability and because of that they had to make up all kinds of conspiracies of what they thought I uh, was doing to make a screen look like this one of their major standpoints on uh, how they felt was it was my cell phone settings until I did four recordings actually recording my cell phone settings switching my settings and live showing that the screen was still presenting the exact same picture quality whether whatever I changed it to in the phone and since now they don't have a leg to stand on with that now they just have to resort to other tactics, which is kind of sad that someone spends that much time trying to uh, tear down somebody's business. But like I said, at the end of the day, always oh, God always blesses me what I need, so knock yourself out. All right, so let me go down here. I just had to explain it to you. If you hear me saying something in the background, it's me answering one of these jokers who has to come into the room and just, this is what they do. Period. Seriously. Early in the morning, we got a new day, we got a new future, how we going to be. And this is what they do. No, you know, that's how people are. That's how you have to accept them. That's how they are. Okay, so I had to go down to the basement. I had to wash up my roller. This is the roller I wash. I see traces of the blue still in there. But it's not as long as you wash it out really good and take a dry cloth. Once you wash it out, just take a dry cloth and go over it, bring it out real good. I used the used roller. My, believe it or not, those who watch the demonstration on this screen, I use the exact same used roller. 
There you go. Because someone said, oh, use, use roller. You can't get a, um, a good uh, paint. Yeah, you can. You can get a smooth, nice paint performance when you use roller. Do it all the time. Save some money. Got a pack of rollers down there. What's the point of me opening up a new roller, throwing it in the trash, open a new roller, throwing it in the trash, when I just wash it out and use it all over again? Save some money. Alright, just make sure you wash it up really good. I put a little detergent in there, wash it down. Doesn't make a difference if I had that on there, it's not going to disrupt my screen. This was on my screen when I painted the other one. Alright, that's done. I'm going to leave this rag over here like so.
All right, probably wondering where the heck I went. I had to make two quarts. I had one quart there. I had to make another quart because 150 inch screen, which gives me a chance to do a little experiment here because usually if you're going to paint 150 inch screen, it does take two quarts. Now, since I've already painted the screen the first time, I was wondering if it would take 100, uh, one quart to repaint the screen. So just in case I made another batch of it. So if I if it doesn't cover, at least I had it does take the two quarts as I thought. All right, let's get some. We gotta paint it in here. I'm a little curious because usually we did the 13 feet back outside. I had to do 13 feet because my deck from where I would land at would be, too, wouldn't be, it goes longer than 13 feet, but it would get in the way of the big screen. But now I got the whole down stairs area. I wonder if I can go past 13 feet on a thousand lumens. And that got me kind of thinking today. I wonder how far back I can go back with a thousand lumens outside at six o'clock in the evening. I'm going to try to do one of these tests. We did the test demonstrations on these screens at 13 feet back. At 1,000 lumens at 6 o'clock in the evening. I'm going to see if I can go a little farther back. Then I'm going to see if I can get 18 out of that. Because now I'm curious, how far can I go back? Can I go past the 13 feet mark? I'm going to try that today. I've got me thinking about that one. I think we got a screen, we got a paint out. I'm doing that one today. So I'm gonna do something a little crazy. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna do that test. I'm gonna see if I can go past 13 feet. And now I said my in my head like I had no choice. I couldn't do it. And keep in mind, because they cut down the tree, there's literally no shade in the backyard now. Nothing protecting anything. It was literally even more brutal than what it was before. So I'm curious about that one now. Alright, so I'll show you what we're doing here. So we're gonna paint that surface right there and we're going to paint that surface okie doke okie doke i'm not worried about marking my floor now keep in mind i don't have any drop cloth or anything at all 
which I'm not worrying about it because this stuff washes off pretty easy. So I'm not worried about hitting my floor. Um, but if you are going to be painting this in your home or in your garage and it's fabric, I just strongly suggest putting some kind of drop cloth material underneath of it, plastic. So that way, when that paint soaks through, it doesn't make contact with your floor. Do not use any form. This is some kind of canvas where basically paint's not going to seep through, then you're good. Worry about this seatment though because this has so many applications on it. It's not even funny, to worry about that. One hundred fifty inch screen is a pretty good size screen, so that's one hundred and fifty inch. My screen's going to be 250 inches, so we have 100 inches more bigger than this. That is going to be a big, big screen. About 150 inches. Very big. I'm going to put some tape. I think I do about a paint on demonstration just about every day now. And live. Oh, I need a bone.
Right here we go. Now, remember when I told you about how when people do things against me, I don't really show things up front to show you exactly how I can prove them wrong. I kind of like to let them dig a ditch for themselves. And then later on, I'll come in and I'll show you the evidence and I'll bury them completely. Same thing like the uh, phone, uh, cell phone incident or conspiracies about my phone having special settings. And I let people run their mouths. Sometimes it's best to just let a person run their mouth. Just let them go, go to town with it. See how far they can dig a hole for themselves. Then you come in. You present their evidence. You give them a chance of no way of digging themselves out of it. And that's how you do it. I had a case a long time ago where an attorney of mine, I got food poisoning from Save-A-Lot from eating a bird that basically had a lot of salmonella and E. coli in it and they bleached the bird. And at the last minute, I couldn't figure out why my attorney didn't present real crucial evidence that could have had me win the case. I did win the case, but he waited to the very last minute until the other side put everything they had, they had everything they had. And at the very last minute, he presents the testing that they did on the bird, showing that the bird had high counts of salmonella and cola. And not only that, the bird was bleached to make it look like it was a healthy bird. And that was the end of it. There was no way for them to be able to dig themselves out of that situation. And I learned from that little experience that sometimes you got to let people talk. And do what they're going to do. And then later on, you come in. Now... Before I start this, there was a comment that was made about me, about how my product uh, and the reason why I'm sick or my lungs was triggered off by that. And I thought that was the most disrespectful thing that anyone could possibly do. I mean, literally, how low can a person go to say something like that? And I explained a few times on camera, I share with my customers what I go through day by day that and. The last house I was in, I breathed in a good amount of mold. And in the last days of where I did videos in that house, I developed a really nasty cough. Now, I'm not going to show you my attorney's information on the lawsuit that's going on. I'm not going to present documents of the inspectors that I paid to go through the house to find out what was making me sick. But I will show you one thing. There was a live YouTube video that I did that when I found what was in the house, I recorded it and I displayed it on um, Facebook Live about the mold that I found in the house that somehow developed over a period of time while me and my ex were living there. Thank God she didn't get sick. I got sick because I was working in that part of the basement doing those videos and I'm the one who breathed it all in. So, you know, I'll present that evidence right there showing you that at that particular time, I had people comment, like, you got to get out of the house, got to get an inspector, you know, don't trust them at all, you know, and time stamped when it happened. I did that basically to defend myself. If it did come to court where it did got to a point where I got really sick or something happened, it was recorded that this would happen and this was how I got sick in this house. So I find it deeply disrespectful that someone would go that far to say, oh, it's coming from its paint. That is really, really, really disrespectful on so many levels. If somebody was sick or going, I would never bring that. I never say anything like that. Never add a conclusion or a conspiracy to that. That's very disrespectful. So, Mr. Jamie, you need to find God. That is very disrespectful. You should never say something like that to begin with before I start this video. That's sad. That's really sad. I don't have no hatred toward you, and I never do have any hatred toward you. I just feel sorry for you. That's how I feel. All right, let's begin. You know, the fact that I go through what I go through every day is mentally and physically dealing with what I'm going with in my body. You know, and I can get up every day and do this. You know what I mean? And if this is something that would harm me, it's something I wouldn't do at all, period. Or I wouldn't sell to anybody else. And if that was the case, I've been in business for over 10 years. There would be high cases and lawsuits against me if that was the case. So you really need to educate yourself and think like an adult before running your mouth. This is why you're getting hit with a lawsuit. It's called slander. When you make up false accusations against someone, and it turns into a 
live rumor, you can be sued for it. Unbelievable. I got to go to some people. All right. I'm sorry to plug that in there. Sorry I had to plug that in there like that. But, you know, I was raised to speak my mind. I got a huge piece of paint that's clumped onto the screen. I'm going to look my screen. I need this. I got a huge droplet of paint on the screen. And I gotta scrape that off. I'm gonna put any more on here. Alright, I got that scraped off. I had a huge droplet, 21. Get one here. So if you're wondering what I'm scraping off over there, got a huge droplet of uh, paint. I got that drop huge. That's what the screen underneath. But huge droplet of paint there. That basically uh, that's a huge high piece of paint. I can't paint over that because that'll leave a, a marking on the screen, and it had to be scraped off. Some people are really scared that you know. You didn't pay for the paint, I understand that. But they're afraid that, you know, they're going to mess it up. And you're not going to mess it up. You're good. You're not going to mess it up. So, I'm just keeping off my screen. Ready? I'm going to open up my door. Let some um, air get in here. There we go. I don't know because I've already painted the screen and it's already absorbed in as much as it possibly could. I would actually get one quart to paint this whole thing, but as I'm looking at it now, it's not going to happen. So I'm glad I made the other one. So what we're going to do is I'm going to use the screen as a drop cloth for right now. I'm going to paint that middle screen in because I'm going to take that outside for later on the day because now it's got me thinking like um, I did the demonstration at 13 feet at 1,000 lumens and now since I got all that room out there. Let's see if we can go back even farther. Let's see if we can do like 15 or 16 or 17. How far can I pull the projector back before the screen starts to basically start to fade? So we'll do that today too. That'll be, that'll be interesting to see. So I'm just going to use this for a drop off right now. And then I'm going to paint the actual screen and use this outside. This is a 150 inch 16.9. It's a pretty big screen. But the screen I need outside has to be 250 inches. So imagine the size of that compared to this. That is going to be a monster screen. But I need that for 3D mapping, so. Okay, so let's begin. Now our sale for this starts on the, what's it on the 10th? As a matter of fact, it's no fun doing this. I'm trying to make it interesting for you guys. It's no fun doing this. Let's paint and dry that screen right there and hit that with a projector. While that's painting and drying, we do a demonstration off that screen right there, and we'll paint the giant screen right here. Because I'm not going to be able to do a demonstration when I paint this screen because it's too big, it's got to dry. All right, so let me get something set up here for that. Ooh, what are we going to use? Let me see. Move it out. Like, I'm like, what the freak? How much is your electric bill? You don't want to know.
try to do things a little different in my demonstrations. So I try to do a little bit of everything. So what we're going to do is we're going to take paint that screen, stick it there. While that screen's drying, watch a movie. I'll do things a little different. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use that screen outside for using for the valve limiter projector. See how far we can go back before that screen washes out. Around six. I'm getting the video set up for this one over here.
done. Now I'm laying this down because I don't want to get anything on my brick. here for a minute. I have to detach you from the floor. Put you over there. I finish my work here. Let that dry. So the screen's going to dry, it's going to get brighter, because it's wet. Alright, so let's go paint this out. And that needs to be turned down because I can't hear that all day. Roll don't have enough brush. Do I have enough to be corners with it? Yeah, I'm gonna tag my um I'm definitely gonna tag my floor just a little bit, but not enough that's gonna basically disrupt my, uh, my floor. So we'll start off with here and then in here because I just want to get my corners. Good. Yeah, I'm definitely, I'm definitely going to need two quarts for this one. So I'll start doing my corners first. It's so really easy. I'm going to definitely get the floor a little bit. I'm 
No, you can't see that. Hold on for a minute. I gotta bring it back a little bit. Just give me a minute. Let me drop this over here. Right in the paint. There we go. Now you got a bit of an idea what I'm doing. Not in the dark now. So let me bring you this way instead. That way you can see everything from there. Okay. Got to take it down because if not, you'll be all over the place. So I got to get my corners. That's what I'm going to be working in my corners. This really should not be all over here like this. Let me bring this up. There's no way I'm going to attack my brick, not like that. I thought I would, but I'm not going to tap it. Just going to get those corners. Those pages. Cut the floor a little bit. I'm not worried about it. I'll show you the cleanup job when I get done. Let me clean the floor. And you'll see how easy it is. Just in case if some of y'all make a mistake and hit the floor by accident. Remember I told you about taking your brush and putting it on an angle like this? This helps you get those little corners a lot easier. Now, keep in mind, if you're going to be doing this with, because uh, I don't have any drop off underneath me. Um, you can go a little buck wild because you don't have to worry about that. You don't have to worry about anything. And I can take whatever excess paint that I have from here. Green, like so. And then get my corners again. Every time I run across an area like this, just go and take it to the corners. saying well Ken there's a lot of wrinkles in the screen don't worry about that all that stretches out of the screen I can show you demonstrations where I've done screens outside not one wrinkle will sit in the screen especially 180 inch sitting outside they didn't have one wrinkle in that screen once it stretches out once the water hits it the elements hit it outside it just moves right on out perfectly those of you worrying about the sun hits it's going to fade the screen it's not going to happen if anything it's going to iron your screen so, don't have to worry about any of that. We're getting our corners. this is done I will post a couple of the fabric screens I've already done I will post a driveway screen the driveway projection screen I show you how to do it from be from beginning from start to finish I show you how to prime the surface very easy to do and one of the tricks that I can do to dry the screen keep in mind your screen when you prime it, it's going to be wet on the top and the bottom to make sure it dries evenly on the bottom and the top all you got to do is take a regular box fan 
take the end of where the grommet's at and just tie that to the top of the fan. And the fan is going to blow air under the screen, causing a ripple effect like a wave. And that's going to dry your screen from the bottom to the top up. And that's going to make it dry even faster. So I'll do that demonstration. You get a chance to see me paint the screen, prime it, and then take it outside and display it, which I usually do. All right, so let's finish our corners here. If I do this with one quart, this would be amazing. If I do this with one quart, but I would advise you, because we're going to do this all the coating. There is 57 inches. This is what people tell me they don't have enough screen paint to paint a screen. Like, are you kidding me? I'm almost halfway through this thing. And then again, like I said, to be honest, in the front, I mean, think about it, but I really think about it. This screen has about two coats of primer on it, and then it has the original coat, which was another screen. So it's not absorbing anything at all, period. So I guess, yeah, first time around, I did go through two quarts on this thing easily. I love painting fabric screens so much. It's so relaxing to paint a fabric screen. Usually when I'm painting these screens, I'm just going to put a stair. Oh man, but you know, that's copyrighted licensed music. I can't play that while I'm doing this video. But I wish I could, but I can't. My corner is good. And I always leave enough paint in between here and this, and I put my foot down. And I've got those corners here. As for this, I can stretch it over there. I'm gonna get some paint on the floor with this one right there. I know I am. But that area has to be done, so usually those corners right here are usually kind of hard to get into. Whoa! My nails might feel like twice, but I'm not worried about that. It washes off the floor. Let me try to get these areas done real good. Not worried about that. Try getting there. Okay. I'm standing in front of the camera. Just trying to get into those little areas. Before I start painting the entire screen in. The grommets are at, there's little tiny crevices in there. It's easier to do when you do it the first time. A little bit different to do when you're going around the second time. But it still works. Make sure that you get in the surfaces. Look pretty good there. All right. Come back. I'm not worried about this. I'm going to make sure I got that little crest. Pretty good.
Now, some people like to do two coats just in case if they miss any spots because it's a pretty big string. So you can do it that way. I put on a light coating after, afterwards just in case if I did miss a spot. So yeah, about, at least it's dry. It took about, it's gonna take two quarts to do it. So, either way, that's dry. So we'll grab another one. So it did take two quarts. So, you know, when you're doing a screen like this, it's a big screen, 150 inches. You know, like I said, you may wanna pass over it one more time. Not because it's not gonna improve the screen or any, at all. You might have missed a few spots. Uh, I've seen people paint the screen, hang it up, and go, crap. But it doesn't make a difference. Even if it's hanging up, just roll over top of it. Be done with it. That's it. Or just paint that spot. That's all. I'm going to paint the whole screen. That's it. Might have put a little too much in that one, but I'm not. I'm good. muddle right through it because you enjoy doing it. Making sure because it's just fabric I haven't missed any spots. Because you can have little pieces in there that you might have missed. This is why I advise that when you do a uh, fixed frame screen, you do a fixed frame screen while the material is already expanded. Don't paint the fixed frame screen without the frame because what happens is you could get little rings in there that you could roll over and then you put this on the back of your screen and expand it and then you have these little white lines all in your screen. Just me basically just getting any areas I might have missed, that's all. Don't need a lot. Just looking for areas I might have missed. I had to do this quite a few times when I was doing 180 inch, but that's why sometimes when I clean that size, I kind of prefer to uh to spray the screen because that way you know I can get I know that I'm gonna get everything, but sometimes you miss from the roller.
should we watch off our giant screen? What should we watch? I'm thinking about maybe a little Tron, some Transformers, maybe some old hide. It's got 150 inch screen to play around in my back here right now. The black one is that. What are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? What are we gonna, do? What are we gonna watch? Huh? I'm gonna take a lawn chair out there tonight, blow it up, maybe watch some Netflix off of it, run the PS4 of it, do some gaming in the back. I don't know. I haven't decided we're gonna do it this year. So, just to give you an example how cheap these screens are, and I like them because number one, they're double stitched, which makes them fantastic. Uh, grommets are really actually the side you know what about the grommets ripping because that's all double stitch and uh let's see um what else i was going to tell you about it very heavy cotton material which i like weatherproof mold resistant which i do like and uh now mind you a 200 a 200 inch screen would cost me nine dollars that's it if i wanted to do 200 to this screen it cost me nine dollars this screen right here i think cost me like 38 dollars or something like that it wasn't a lot of money that's why I like this company. I like the way the screens are. I love the screens. I'll tell you something. I know Crow Boy is coming to my channel and watch. I know y'all in here. They're coming here to watch. They're coming here to see what I'm up to, what I'm doing, what I'm working on. You're curious about what I do. I don't mind you coming in. You come in and you want and watch as long as you're respectful. If you're respectful, you can come here and watch, see some of the demonstrations, you might learn something new. Mind you being in here. Like I said you can't come in here. It's just how you act when you come in. That's what it's about. It's all about how you act when you come in. If you're respectful coming in, you ask respectful questions, you can stay in here and watch demonstrations, learn something new. If you want to be disrespectful, you got to go. All right, so that's all done. We're finished. Like I said, fabric screens a little bit more work. Then painting a fixed screen. Fixed screen, screen, screen's all stretched out. Do, 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 do. I'm done. That's it. Let me uh, get you off the stand. I'm going to tape where the stand is at. And we still have paint left over. So I'm going to paint something else today too with that paint. I've never did a 235.1 outside. So I'm going to do a 235.1 screen outside. 80 inch 235.1. I'm going to use my uh, ViewSonic projector for that one. All right. That's what we're going to use for that one. There's the screen I just painted over there. Spanish contrast demonstrations of it. That's a fun screen with you. I don't know if it's a good one. I don't think there are. We're also going to be messing around with the white spatter screen outside. That demonstration is also going to be done outside. So this is an official white projection screen. Official outdoor white projection screen splattered with our technology. No fancy paint job, this splattered. So we're going to be doing some demonstrations on this one too, because this one 
outside tomorrow. It's actually day two. So we're going to be outside for a bit today. Nice warm weather today we're going to have. This is going to be fantastic. So eye opener for those of you using white projection screens, you think you're getting contrast, you're not getting it. Hmm. Let's go with, um, should we shoot anything we pretty much want, but let's go with, um, let me see. I'm gonna do the AK. I like doing the AK with the birds. It's bright. Contrast anyway, it's gonna show up on the screen regardless. Oh, that's the screen we just painted a few minutes ago. Actually, I, I painted that screen on that screen before I painted this screen. Just to show you what, how this screen is gonna look reacting to the projector. So that way, not only do you get to see me paint this giant 150 inch screen, but you get to see the same screen paint that was used on here that is used on that square screen in the middle. The big white screen, I just threw that in there because that's the splatter screen we use to show people that how much they're missing when they're using white projection screens outside or inside. So let's go over here and let's pull something up. We have the 8K, right? Let me see if we can pull this down. Do 8K and then meanwhile, in the next room, you can see my uh, 900 lumen and 1000 lumen projector at 10 feet back producing images in fully lit environment on a black screen. So let me see. Oh, I saw this one last night. This one looks pretty cool. That one I'm doing outside, definitely. I want to see the birdies. The birdies. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Oh, frogs. We can do frogs. Now, as I said before, that a black screen is never going to produce a white level as high as a white screen, but understand, you're using 4,300 lumens on a white screen outside, that's when it's going to get whitewashed. It doesn't make a difference. If you hit, if you show white levels on it, you're not going to see it too well because that screen's going to get whitewashed. Too many, too much white levels are hitting the screen. It's supposed to be red. All that's gone. It washes out completely. I'm going to get my frogs in here. Some kind of birdies or something. I want to see some abstract. See what this one is.
in my screens are when they're when they're um when they're wet they're a little darker but as you can see if they're that if they're producing that kind of we can actually check so you can see the screen crystal clear with no problem and they're wet look at that wet screen let's expand it because i want to expand a little farther because i want you to see just zoom in on that let me get let me expand this out a little bit more there we go let's open this up and expand it so you can really see exactly how much you're missing from a white screen using the projector 4300 lumen chrissy versus black technology And as the screen starts to dry, it's going to get brighter. And as I said before, if the technology was so dark, you wouldn't be able to see it. So we'll switch it over to black and white versus a white screen. That is my technology showing you in black and white versus a white screen. As I said before, when I switched over to black and white, the screen only has two choices. The colors you're only going to see are black and white. That's it. If the screen wasn't producing a high enough white level, you would just see only the white screen pulling up. The black screen wouldn't even exist. But you can and see that black and white. You can actually see my screen perfectly clear, the details, and the other screen is completely washed out, which means that screen is pulling contrast and reading white levels at the same time. That's why... I'm, I'm, I'm kind of happy they told me about the, the whole settings things because now I can play around with this and show you exactly how it doesn't affect our screen. That is freaking, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Crow Boys, for that. All right, now let me see what I just did. I just kicked the crap out of my controller somewhere. I put it somewhere. Oh, there it is. Ugh. Lost it back there somewhere. How much were you playing on this one? A little bit on this one. And I'll show you settings on this one. My projector. My projector on this one is brightness is at 25. None of these projectors in here, my big boy projectors, none of them are over 30 when it comes to the brightness. They're all under uh, under. 27 26 something like that i don't need all that this is ambient like projection technology i mean why would i max out burning my projector out? all right and see the reason why i bought the splatter screen out because i want to show you that when i should do demonstrations off the splatter screen it still looks the exact same way as the screen i just painted They're all the same. No matter what surface you paint it on, it all reacts the same way. Someone was asking me about plexiglass and glass. I was like, it's going to react the same way. You're just coating over the surface. That's all you're doing. And there in the next room are the, like I said, 1,000 lumen projector and a 900 lumen projector in the next room. On a black screen, fully lit environment, which shows you don't have to have a high lumen count if you don't need it. So, like I said, I do demonstrations. I do demonstrations on a different level. People have to understand that. In this demonstration, I displayed two projectors: 800, 900, 1,000 lumen, and 900 lumen projector in the next room, fully lit environment. And in here, I painted a 150 inch screen. And then not only did I paint the 150 inch screen, but I painted that screen before painting the 150 screen. That's a 57 inch screen. Put that up there, and let that screen dry, and let you watch that screen. Before this one dries, because I can't, I can't displace the 150 screen. It has to dry first. It's too big. But like I said, you got a chance that we paint the watch, we paint the technology, and display and dry the technology, and then show you the difference between that and a white screen using a 4300 lumen projector.
That's a massive, huge difference right there. That's why I said I do demonstrations on a different level. I do. I wouldn't say they were ever misinformed in any of my demonstrations with my product. There's no way how can you be misinformed. And then on top of that, I'll put links at the bottom and say, hey, look, if you can't understand how I paint screens, here's step by step on how I did it. So no one can ever say, oh, he's misinformed. Or they're misinformed. Just give you something just to gander at. 1,000 lumen projector, 900 lumen projector, both of them displaying white on my screens. All right, well, with that being said, uh, oh, yeah, I forgot to show you. I'm going to scrub my floors up real quick. Let me show you how fast this stuff is to remove off the floors. And then after that, I have to get out of here because I got to get all this to dry. And then I got to get ready to set this screen up outside because we're going to do demonstrations. And then we're going to do demonstrations off the splatter screen. And the reason why that screen was painted, because I was thinking when I was doing the test for the screens at 13 feet back, I didn't have much room on the deck. All I could get was 13 feet back before I actually slammed into the other screen. So now I'm thinking, since now I got the backyard cleared out, I could try to see how far back I can pull back a thousand lumen projector at six o'clock in the evening outside and see how long, how far I would have to take it back before the screen starts to deteriorate or wash out or the technology can't pick it up. So now that's got my clock kind of kind of ticking, thinking about that one right there. So I gotta try that one right there. I might turn that into a challenge. I might do another one. And I'll display my projectors for those who didn't see. There you can look up the projector model number if you want. That's the projector right there. That's the ViewSonic 900 lumens running through my computer right there because it's too old to run through a, um, uh, adapter and this right here is my Sony over here I'll put the model number this this is right here running a thousand lumens and they're both displaying white images on the screen or we'll colorful white images bright images to show that I can display my screens in fully lit environments without the fear of my screens either washing out or fading or becoming so dark that you can't even see them either when I'm using just a projector of a thousand lumens or 900 now before I leave out of here real quick, for those you don't know about the challenge, and I'm sorry if a few people get upset over this, but it is what it is, just do the challenge. The challenge is for one month. I had to swap out my projector. I can no longer use my 3400 lumen projector in the environment. I can't use any form of high power projector in here. The only projectors I can use in here are the two projectors you're seeing right now. 900 to 1000, that's be 1000 lumens and down. For my end, because my screens are black, I have to only display bright white or colorful demonstrations. Uh, something that black screens are not supposed to do, because usually if people are showing off a black screen, they're going to st stick strictly the contrast levels, knowing that's the strong point of the screen. Such as someone showing off a light gray screen paint mix, they're going to stick to bright images and stay away from contrast. So for me, I have to display white levels, snow scenes, and so forth on these projectors back here on a black surface for one month and the other person crow is going to have to display his light gray screen paint showing contrast levels as in star fields oled demonstration very dark contrast demonstrations and it has to be done in a fully lit environment no ultra short throws can be used in the demonstration all long throws a thousand lumens down 600 by 800 res svga those are my projectors running in right now and keep in mind, my projectors were manufactured in 1999. Good God, that's old. Yes. So, if I can do it, and if people are demanding for me to produce white levels on a black screen, then I have a right to ask the same request back. And like I said, I don't want to see any dark, that, that wall, background of the wall, see how my wall is? Nice and bright. How you can see everything crystal clear, how white it is on the wall. That's how it has to look. I don't want a dark, shadowy area with a little light here and a little light there, and then some bright lights in the background. No, I want that image illuminated. The same way he had that demonstration where he showed off that Optima P1 doing the football demonstration, it should look just like that doing a star field demonstration. And before someone says, well, he has a light gray screen, you have a black screen. Should have never challenged a black screen to begin with. That was a bad idea. Now, also, too, for those of you who want to say, well, you don't have a gray screen, I do. I have one called Black Silver, and the Black Silver pulled the Starfield demonstration and a Tron demonstration outside at 6 o'clock in the evening, 
13 feet back. Gray screen. Now, if you want to see those demonstrations, I can put those links at the bottom too. And we did test that screen, not against a white screen, not against our own stuff. We tested against high performance gray screens to see how it would stack up and it beat them with no problem. So, like I said, if you can't do a demonstration against a gray screen, I'll design one and I'll put it on the market and I'll do all the demonstrations that they will hide from. And that's what the black silver is. And it's market at $89 a quart. So you can't complain about the price being expensive for a gray screen. Let me show you my angle gain real quick. I love showing the angle gain on this. All right, so that's what the, that's when you, when you, anytime you see me coming here, these projectors will be displayed and I'll have my lights on through the entire, anytime I do a demonstration, it has to be done on these screens, fully lit environment. So that means no lights out, Crow. Lights have to stay on from beginning to end. But I decide to do one a little bit more difficult than yours because if my screens can display images outside on a thousand lumens, and here it's a cakewalk, it's easy. So to make it a little bit more harder for me, I added in a 900 lumen projector over there to make it a little bit more difficult. All right, that being said, um, you know what, I should later on, I should paint me my black silver screen, take that outside and have some fun with that too. I might take that outside, my black silver outside. Uh, such a big difference, isn't it? All right, with that being said, uh, I'm going to finish. I'm done with this screen and bring the fan up, let it dry out real good. And then after that, uh, find some place to stretch it out outside. And we'll do some demonstrations off of it. I haven't done a screen outside in a while, so that should be cool. Let me charge up my big speakers, too, because I can't take my center speakers out there. They were designed for the deck. The sale for the black screen paint starts on the 10th. We're only going to put 1000 in a shopping cart. So either two things happen. Either the sale comes as a final or the end of the sale comes as a final or the shopping cart depletes. Right? One or the other. Um... It'll be one per person, just to let you know. So if someone comes in and they put in an order for three or four of them, I don't know why you would do that because you just buy a gallon of it. That'd be cheaper. But anyway, it's one per person. All right. We have companies that'll come. In. This is not for companies. Just put that out there really quick. That shopping cart is not for companies. It is for customers only because companies will come in and clean that shopping cart out. So it's not for companies. It's for customers only. All right, with that being said, thank you all for your time. I have to go, and God bless.